What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Welcome to Dead Meat, the horror channel hosted by a guy who kind of looks like that one teacher you had in middle school. I'm that child wrangler doppelganger, James A. Janice, and today I'm going to be counting down my top 10 kills from the Saw franchise. I covered the 8 current Saw films in my Kill Count series in mid-2018, and they've remained among my most popular videos ever since. In fact, despite its age restriction, the Jigsaw Kill Count is still the highest viewed video on my channel. These crazy ass movies captured my audience's imagination with their twisty turny storytelling, their intriguing antagonists, and perhaps perhaps most famously, their gory graphic kills. So what better way to kick off a reinvestment in my ranking videos than to rank what I think are the 10 greatest kills from the Saw series. I counted a total of 88 kills when I covered the franchise, although it probably should have been 89. I've lost hope for Mark Hoffman ever making a return. No! Game over. Of those 89 deaths, I've narrowed it down to my own personal top 10, based on a number of criteria, including the uniqueness or creativity of the kill, the quality of the special effects, the impact on the film or franchise's story, and just how friggin' sweet I think they are. Also, since I didn't do behind the scenes stuff back when I made the Saw kill counts, I'll include some of that information here just to give this video more oomph. Speaking of oomph, I want to be able to share every awesome frame of these nasty decapitations and limb separations, which will certainly result in an age restriction. So it's a good thing I've got a sponsor today in the form of Skillshare. Skillshare is an affordable online learning community that offers classes to help you learn practical skills from concise lessons that fit inside busy schedules. For instance, I'm a busy ass dude myself, but I'm still finding a lot to learn from Skillshare's class about bookkeeping for freelancers led by Emily Simcox. It's helping me with something I know absolutely nothing about. Business! If you want to get better at business, or creative things, or even health and wellness, you can try out Skillshare with two free months of premium membership by clicking the link in the description of this video. And after that, it's only about $10 a month. So make 2020 a year where you explore new skills with Skillshare's online classes. You probably won't find murder trap building classes from Jigsaw on Skillshare, but thanks to them, you can still admire the results of his work in this video. Without further ado, let's get to the rankings. Number 10. Number 10 on my list is a kill I hate to watch from a movie I hate to watch. It's Nina's death from Saw 3D. As you probably know, I hate this cheap looking shithouse film for many reasons that I can explain in a future video ranking the movie, but I can't deny that it's got some gnarly kills in it. Case in point, this one. Saw 3D sees con man Bobby Dagan face a series of trials that results in a lot of other people getting killed, sometimes completely innocent ones. About halfway through the movie, he comes across his publicist Nina in a trap where the more she screams, the closer these monster-sized hypodermic needles get to impaling her through the neck. You'd think that would be enough motivation for her to stay quiet, but as always with Jigsaw's bullshit, there's a catch. That catch is a key attached to a fish hook in her stomach. In order to free Nina and save her from death, Bobby has to slip into some blood waders and get to gut fishing. This kill is impossible to watch without banging on a table or sticking a balled up fist into your mouth. It's probably the single hardest thing for me to watch in a series of movies filled with difficult to watch gore. Because of the visceral reaction it evokes, I'm pretty much obligated to include it in my top 10. Even if the ultimate cause of death, those needles stabbing her through the neck, is relatively simple and straightforward. I hate watching this kill, but because of that hatred, I've gotta respect it. Number 9. My number 9 kill is Detective Halloran's in Jigsaw. Halloran is a corrupt cop who lets criminals go free in exchange for information, a practice that backfires when one of those ex-convicts, Edgar Munson, kills the wife of Logan Nelson, a veteran medical examiner who works for the police department. Halloran gets his comeuppance for that fuck-uppance after Logan is revealed to have been the unlikely accomplice of Jigsaw this whole time, even though we had never fucking heard of him before this, the eighth movie in the series. You're working with him. I am him. 
cool. Halloran is killed by a trap that turns eight miniature lightsabers in on his head. At first, the damage doesn't look all that graphic, but after he falls to his knees, his head blossoms open into a meat flower spurting out some nice blood pollen. This kill is, admittedly, a bit more digitally done than I'd prefer, especially in a series well known for its practical effects, but it is a striking visual, and the most memorable kill of the movie. Also, I know some people said that they couldn't see a skull inside all that mess, but I think maybe there's a layer of bone in there, right? No? Whatever, man. Still a loud way for Logan to speak for the dead. I speak for the dead. Yep, we know you do, Logan. But that's not as cool a line as Game Over. Number 8. Coming in at number 8 is Seth Baxter's kill from Saw 5. I know I gave the golden chainsaw to Agent Strom in this movie's kill count, but I've since changed my mind. I think this is the coolest kill from the fifth film. It kicks off the movie, which is great, and eventually you learn that Seth was placed in this swinging pendulum blade trap by the T. Hoff Thousand as revenge for Seth's murder of Hoffman's sister. Seth is told that in order to escape this trap, he must willfully crush his hands in a couple of metal vices, which he reluctantly does to save his life. Of course, even though Seth adheres to the rules, Hoffman's not Jigsaw, bitch, so the hand crushing doesn't actually stop the blade from lowering into his abdomen and cutting him in high-off. I love all the bits of intestines flying around from this thing. It's so gross. Made by production designer Tony Iani, the top metal plate of the hand crushing device was a foam pad used for wider shots with the actor's actual hand inside. Close-ups reversed the realness and used a prosthetic hand getting crushed by real metal plates. Drip bag! For the bifurcation, actor Joris Jarsky had to stick his upper half out of a hole in a table while a prosthetic lower half was blended into his chest. Then that thing got cut up by an aluminum blade while crew members used air hoses to make it look like he was breathing. And of course, the inside of that prosthetic was filled with all sorts of gnarly stuff to fly out as it was struck with the blade. We've got pins in there that we were hooking our blood bags into so when the pendulum swung through it actually popped some bags on camera. I like this kill because of how many intestines we see. And because, chronologically, it kicks off Hoffman's four-movie murder spree that would only come to an end thanks to another surprise Jigsaw accomplice, Lawrence Gordon, who, by the way, is a doctor. I'm a doctor. I wasn't lying. Number seven. The seventh coolest saw kill for me is Eric Matthews. <laughs> No, not that Eric Matthews, the one played by the new kid on the block. Eric's story begins in Saw 2 and continues until the end of Saw 4, when he's used as a pawn in Daniel Riggs' test. Because Riggs wasn't enough of a slow-ass motherfucker, he finished his test too early for Eric Matthews to live. See, the shady lawyer Art Blank was in charge of watching over Eric and could only allow him to go free after a 90-minute timer ended. Rig arrived before the countdown finished, and despite Eric's attempts to keep him at bay, Rig opened a door and sent two giant ice blocks swinging down to explode Eric's head. What a slushy fucking mess. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of heads exploding, and that sentiment is apparently shared by Saw 4's production designer David Hackle, who would go on to direct the next film in the series, Saw 5. It was a perfect climax for a film. That awesome climax was done with real blocks of ice that were 300 pounds each, and which were slammed against a bag of fake blood that weighed 6 pounds. Three, two, one. A stunt performer was affixed with dangly flesh bits for the bodies tumbled to the ground, and wham bam thank you ma'am, that gave us one bloody wall burger. Hold the head. Aside from being an awesome head explosion, this kill also wins points for its murder weapon, since I've always maintained it'd be the perfect crime to kill someone with ice. Just melt that shit and poof, no more evidence. Number 6. For number six, I'm actually going to include a group kill, that of the neo-Nazis in Saw 3D. I'll be the first to admit that this scene doesn't really factor all that well into the movie's plot. In fact, I had to go back and look up why Hoffman killed these assholes in the first place. I guess it was to frame Jill Tuck since he left the reverse bear trap at the crime scene. But come on, Hoffy, you can't expect us to believe that this lady is gonna set up a four-person murder mobile. She can't even run right. Maybe calibrate your incrimination 
nation a little better, brah. The fate of these skinheads is determined by the fortitude of their leader, Evan, played by Chester Bennington. In order to prevent their deaths, he'd have to rip enough skin off his back to reach this lever outside the windshield before a timer went off. He doesn't. Boy, did he try, though. And the skin ripping effects are second only to Nina's digestive fishing expedition in terms of saw stuff that nearly makes me look away. After Evan fails, we get two more amazing kills. His girlfriend Kara gets her head crushed by the car's tire, and his buddy Dan gets his arms and jaw ripped off by chains. Freaking beautiful, man. I don't really care about how the fourth guy here died, since he just got hit by a car, but those first two and the skin peeling? Incredible. Plus, I like that this trap's victims are actually bad people, which isn't always the case with Jigsaw's victims. Remember his reasoning when he targeted Lynn Denlin? Unless you're the type of person who swallows antidepressants to hide the pain. Yeah, she was suffering from depression, dude. That's fucked up, Jigsaw. Number five. Coming in at number 5 is another kill from Saw 4, that of Ivan Lansness. You may not know that name, but if you've ever seen this movie, you probably remember this kill. Ivan was a nasty mofo who raped at least three women, but who never faced any legal consequences thanks to that shady lawyer, Art Blank. That made Ivan the perfect candidate for some jigsaw justice, which is why he wound up in a motel room with Daniel Rigg, the main focus of Saw 4's trap plot. Upon learning of Ivan's crimes, Rig forced Ivan to strap himself onto a bed, where his own test began. In order to gain freedom, Ivan would have to stab out both of his eyes with a sharp contraption. He only managed to get halfway through the task before giving up and letting the trap end his life, which was done in spectacular fashion. This bed trap rips off Ivan's limbs one by one and flings them all around the room. And I absolutely love how balls to the walls it is. Or limbs to the walls, I guess. I also love that the behind the scenes video for this kill uses Loaded, the same song used as an entrance theme for the fucking Hardy Boys. What's great about the jigsaw traps, which is my favorite thing about them, is they all work as we say they work in the movie. As you may have heard there, while headbanging to Team Extreme, director Darren Lynn Bowsman and effects artist Warren Appleby made sure that all of their traps actually worked in real life to add to the realism of the deaths. For the flinging limbs, however, casts were made of the actor's limbs to create prosthetics. After all, you, you can't just, you know, rip someone's arms off. No, no you cannot. The usual tricks were used, with actor Marty Adams coming up through a hole in this bed, then having the fake limbs attached and eventually violently deattached. A full-sized fake body was also created for the gruesome aftermath of the kill. One of his legs didn't quite get ripped off and yanked his torso off the bed. And that's something that Darren and I always talk about, is the idea that the carnage isn't perfect, but it still did what was intended, which was to tear the guy apart and kill him. Great work on those effects. I love that level of detail in my gory graphic kills. Number four. Number four on my list of top saw kills is Timothy Young. No relation to Amanda Young, as far as we know. Some time before the saw films began, Timothy irresponsibly drove his car drunk and accidentally ran down eight-year-old Dylan Denlin. This, of course, was the origin story for slow-ass motherfucking Jeff, the kill count's most infamous running joke. Er, walking joke? Dylan's dad, Jeff, never recovered from his son's death and was eventually tested by Jigsaw in a series of trials wherein he never quite managed to learn how to pick up enough speed to save people from dying. The climax of these tests involved Jeff facing Timothy Young, the man who killed his son, now a reformed med student stuck inside a torture rack. True to his name though, Jeff was too slow to save Timothy from an extremely painful death at the hands of the rack, which began by splintering his limbs one by one. The slow, relentless twists that caused Timothy's bones to pop out from beneath his skin are seriously excruciating. And when it's all said and done, the back of Timothy's head is left facing forward. Although at least it means we're finally done watching Jeff dawdle his ass from victim to victim. These limbs being destroyed were done with both prosthetics filled with lots of nasty fake blood and simple makeup effects that made it look like actor Mpo Koaho's arm skin was twisted around. And for the final shot, they made a cast of the back of his head that he then wore like a mask. It was just, just gorgeous. Yeah, that's uh, gorgeous, I guess. Number three. 
My number three kill is William Easton, the health insurance executive in the not at all subtle Saw 6, which I actually kinda love. William is abducted by Hoffman for denying John Kramer health insurance and becomes the main target of the trap plot in that movie. After reaching the end of a whole bunch of traps that make him choose who gets to live and who gets to die, William finds himself face to face with the family of Harold Abbott, a man who died after William cancelled his health insurance. Although Harold's wife Tara is willing to find forgiveness, his son Brent is not, and pulls a lever condemning William to death. The death is caused by a giant bed of needles pumping a whole bunch of hydrofluoric acid into William's body, which melts the motherfucker from the inside out. As his sister Pamela Jenkins watched and screamed in horror, William's insides were turned into a smoking heap of bloody viscera that slowly melted to the ground. It's absolutely disgusting in the best kind of way, and I love that it's the rare chemical-based kill for a saw trap. They're usually pretty mechanical. Plus, I think a lot of you viewers got a kick out of seeing the OG Roderick kill a dude. Number 2 Taking the silver medal in my list of Saw kills is Detective Allison Carey, an OG Saw character who met an unfortunate end in the second sequel. Only 15 minutes into Saw 3, Carey finds herself in the infamous Angel Trap, where she has to retrieve a key from a vat of acid in order to unlock herself before the timer runs out. Because Carey's a total fucking boss, she pushes through the pain and succeeds. But the trap doesn't let her go, because as we find out later, this one was set up by Jig Saw's original protege, Amanda Young, who doesn't exactly play by the rules. And so, after striking a beautiful pose, Carrie was killed by the angel trap, ripping open her ribs and exposing all her gooey innards. It's not the most graphic Saw kill, obviously, but I think it's shot beautifully by director Darren Lynn Bowsman, who himself describes the trap as something elegant. It's pretty in the same, in the same way that it's horrific. This is also ranked highly because it's the first time we see one one of Amanda's victims in a trap, and it shows us how Jigsaw's apprentices don't always operate by his rules. The trap was made using magnets that would give out and cause the metal ribs on the outside to fling apart, revealing all the fake guts that were loaded inside actor Dina Meyer's shirt. It's another example of how Bowsman's traps were designed to work in real life, which I cannot commend enough. They could have easily taken shortcuts making their saw traps, but he always went the extra mile to make them look as legit as possible. Bowsman? More like boss man. Number 1 Actually, before we grant the top prize here, I want to shout out a few runners up for this list. First off, Zepp Hindle, who was beaten to death with a toilet tank lid at the end of the first movie. It's a classic moment, and it won the golden chainsaw in my kill count, so it's only right that I mention it here. Secondly, another kill from Saw 3D, that of Suzanne, Bobby Dagan's lawyer. It's nothing complicated, but I'm always surprised watching it because of just how long it goes on for. She gets stabbed in the face for ever, and it's bloody as all hell. Finally, Danica Scott's kill in Saw 3 is worth a mention as well, since she was frozen into an ice sculpture thanks to Jeff's defective speed setting. That's a unique and creative kill that I tried to acknowledge during the numbers by making her figure blue instead of red. But instead, a bunch of people just thought I made a mistake. What are you gonna do? Alright, time to finally hand out the gold. My number one kill for the entire Saw series goes to Jill Tuck, who died near the end of Saw 3D. I actually hate that Jill dies, especially in this piece of shit movie. But her death is at the hands of the reverse bear trap, which was introduced in the very first Saw film and which immediately made an impact, even if it only destroyed a styrofoam head at first. It wasn't until Saw 3D that we got to see it on a live test subject, and boy was the payoff worth it. The trap leaves Jill's head with one moon-sized flesh crater dripping blood into her lap, and not even my burning hatred for this movie can counter how absolutely freaking awesome this kill is. It's an easy winner for me, and I'm real sad I couldn't find any behind the scenes info on Saw 3D kills. Cause man would I love to see how they did this. Game over.
So those are my rankings for the kills in Saw. One day I'd like to rank the movies themselves, and then in another video, rank the traps independent of the deaths they did or did not cause. That'd be fun, right? Until then though, I'm James A. Janice, and I'll see you next week on Dead Meat. Thanks a lot for watching this ranked video. It was really fun for me to sit down and do a video that wasn't just a kill count, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Next week we might have another super cut, or it might be something else. I don't really know. That's the beauty of the schedule right now. It gives me some freedom to be creative. And then on Friday, January 31st, you'll have your first kill count of 2020. Be good people.